In this video, we're going to spend a little bit more time looking at how we uh, show the concentrations of acids. We've spoken about the difference between strength and concentration, concentration being molarity and strong versus weak being how much it dissociates into its ions or not. But when we have acids that have uh, that don't completely dissociate, we have to think about the concentration of the acid molecules and the concentrations of the ions. So if an acid doesn't completely dissociate in water, the concentration of the acid molecule is different for every acid. And so the concentration of that hydronium ion, that H3O+, plus, is uh, different for every acid. And so we have to have a system that tells us what the concentration of the acid is because that is dependent on the, um, the number of ions that are in that particular acid. So we use something called <clears throat> a system to describe that, and that's called pH. And you've probably heard it before when you've heard commercials on TV about things being pH balanced for your skin or your hair, things like that. But the way that we calculate pH is we use a formula that says pH is the negative log of the hydrogen or hydronium ion concentration. So remember that uh, the square brackets mean molarity, and then the log button on your calculator will work for this. So it's fairly easy to do these calculations. We also have to define a relationship for the amount of base, and we use something called pOH and that's equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Then we have to be able to reverse a log. If we have a pH or a pOH, we need to be able to figure out those concentrations. So let's look at how you reverse a log. If we undo a log, a log is a logarithmic with the base 10. So what we're saying is 10 to that negative pH gives us that hydronium ion concentration, and 10 to the negative pOH gives us the OH minus, or hydroxide ion concentration. And to use that in your calculator, if you're trying to find hydronium or hydroxide ion concentration, if you want to do that 10 to the negative pH or pOH step, you just use the second log keys. All right, so let's look at that mathematical relationship. These uh, equations that are boxed are all on your yellow packet on the formulas page. So remember we looked at the Kw, which is the equilibrium constant for water, and that's equal to the concentration of hydronium ion times hydroxide ion. And then if we take the log of both sides, and you may or may not have had logs in math at this point. If you haven't, just take my word for these steps. If you have, it'll help you understand how we went from Kw to the equations that we use. But if you, if you take the log of both sides, remember we always do the same thing to mathematical equations to make sure that they're equal. When we take the log of two numbers that are multiplied, like the hydronium and hydroxide ions, then we add those logs to each other. And so we can substitute in 1 times 10 to the negative 14th for uh, Kw, because we know that that's the value. And then if we take the log of 1 times 10 to the negative 14th on the left, that becomes negative 14. And then if we go ahead and divide through by negative 1, you can see that 14 is equal to the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration plus the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. And if you go back to those formulas that were on the last slide, you can see that we can substitute in that 14 is equal to pH plus pOH. And this will probably be your most useful formula for this part of the unit. Now, let's look at some different pHs of things that you might be familiar with. So things that are more acidic have lower pHs. And we've looked at the uh, guided inquiry for pH. So you've started to get an idea of the relationship between pH and hydrogen ion concentration. POH and hydroxide ion concentration. And you can see that things that are much, the more acidic things are, the lower their pHs are and the higher their POHs. Things like the acid in your stomach, gastric juice, have very low pHs. That's a very, very strong acid. 
things like tomatoes, they have a fair amount of acid in them. And even uh, coffee has acid in it. And you can look, you've probably heard of acid rain. You can see that its pH is between five and six. When you look at body fluids like um, blood and tears, those are fairly close to seven, which is neutral. And then when you look at things that we use for cleaning, like baking soda and borax, uh, ammonia and bleach, those are things that tend to have very high pHs. Things that are, have low pHs tend to be uh, more things that we eat or drink. Um, they taste uh, acidic, they taste kind of uh, vinegary or sour. Um, you don't obviously want to taste something that's not a food item, but things that are basic tend to taste bitter. If you've ever had to take milk of magnesia, it is an unpleasant thing. Or if you've brushed your teeth with baking soda, those things do not taste very good. Um, the other thing that can happen is when you put something that is basic on your skin, it reacts with the fats and oils in your skin and it feels slippery on your skin because it converts it to soap. Kind of interesting, I'll explain that a little bit more in class. But anyway, I just wanted you to see some things and be a little bit familiar with the range of pHs. And then I wanna show you some problems. So let's look at this practice problem. In this one, it is giving us the hydrogen ion concentration and it's asking us to find the pH. So we want to look at our formulas page and look at the equations that have the formulas for pH. And we want to find the equation that has the relationship between pH and hydrogen ion concentration. And since we're solving for pH, we want the one that says pH equals something in terms of hydrogen ion concentration. So hopefully you're looking at your formulas page. You see that this says negative log of hydrogen ion concentration is how we calculate pH. And then it's just a matter of plugging in these numbers. So negative log of one times 10 to the negative third molar. And when you punch that into your calculator, you're just gonna punch in negative log 1e negative 3, just like you did when we did earlier exponents. And when you hit enter, it should tell you that the pH is equal to 3. And with sig figs, that'll be 3.0. Let's try another one. In this problem, we're, we are being given the hydrogen ion concentration that we had in the earlier problem, so we solved that one for pH. But now we're being asked to find the pOH of that solution. So we know that the pH of this solution, because we solved for it in the earlier problem, is three. So if we know the pH of the solution is three, we can use that relationship between pH and pOH to find our pOH. So we know that there's a formula that says pH plus pOH is equal to 14. If we want to solve for pOH, we're going to subtract pH from both sides. And so we end up with pOH equals 14 minus pH. And so that would be 14 minus 3, which would be 11. And pH does not have a unit. This is the only number that you will not have to have a unit for when you are solving these problems. Let's try another one. All right, so in this problem, we are being given the pH and we're being asked to find the hydroxide ion concentration. So when you have a problem like that, we can only relate the hydroxide ion concentration to pOH directly. So that's going to be a two-step problem. So we're going to use our first step, we're going to use our pH to find our pOH. So we know that our pH plus pOH is equal to 14. And if we subtract our pH from both sides, pOH will be 14 minus pH, which is going to be 14 minus 9. And that would be 5. And with sig figs, that would be 5.00. This 14 is assumed to have unlimited zeros and sig figs. So now that we have our pOH, we've got 
to find our hydroxide ion concentration. So we want to find the equation that has hydroxide ion concentration equals something in terms of our uh, pOH, and that's going to be 10 to the negative pOH. And then we just plug in our number. It's going to be 10 to the negative fifth. And typically the way that that would be written is you would see that as 1.00 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. Uh, remember that that is a concentration because it is the square brackets of the hydroxide. So it does, the concentration does have to have a unit and the unit for that is molarity. Let's try another one. All right, so in this problem, we're being given information about the hydronium ion concentration. Now remember that H3O plus and H plus are interchangeable. So the hydronium and the hydroxide ion concentration are the two things that we have in this problem. So in this problem, we're being given the hydronium ion concentration and we're being asked to find the hydroxide ion concentration. Now remember, this is really important, that H3O plus and H plus are interchangeable. So what we're being given is the hydrogen ion concentration, and we're being asked to find the OH minus. There are a couple of ways to do this. The one equation that relates both of these is the one that says that Kw is equal to the H3O plus concentration times the OH minus concentration. And we know that that's equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And so if we want to solve for OH minus concentration, we can divide both sides by that hydronium ion concentration. And then these will cancel, and we will be left with hydroxide ion concentration is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by our hydronium ion concentration, which from the problem is 1 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. And so we're going to go ahead and plug that into our calculator, and that would give you 1 times 10 to the negative ninth molar. All right, so we can use this equation, this Kw equals hydronium ion concentration times hydroxide ion concentration, and then set that equal to that value of Kw to allow us to solve that problem. All right, let's try some that have uh, some different numbers in them. All of these have been just 1 times 10 to an exponent, but reality is that that's not typical when you start actually finding pHs of solutions. So let's look at one that says, what is the pH of a solution with a hydronium ion concentration of 2.55 times 10 to the negative 4 molar? Remember that that hydronium ion concentration is H3O plus, and it's interchangeable with H plus. So if we want to find the pH, we can say that pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. And that's just going to be negative log of the concentration that was given to us in our problem. So 2.55 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. When you plug that into your calculator, just punch negative log 2.55e negative 4, and that's all you have to do. When you hit enter, your pH will come out to be 3.59. Remember to think about sig figs, 3 in your problem here, 3 in your answer. No unit on pH. Let's try one more. So in this problem, it's asking us to find the pOH of a solution, and it's giving us the hydronium ion concentration. Remember that pOH is directly related to hydroxide ion concentration, but when we have pOH and we're given hydronium ion concentration, H3O+, then we have to have a two-step process to find that. 
So the first thing that we want to do, we're going to end up using that pH plus pOH equals 14 to find this, but in order to do that, our first step is to find pH. So we're going to go ahead and say that our pH is equal to our negative log of our hydronium ion or hydrogen ion concentration. And that's just going to be negative log of 5.50 times 10 to the negative 8th. Remember to use your exponent key. And then we are going to plug that in. And what I got with the correct sig figs is 7.5. 2, 6. And then we're going to use our equation pH plus pOH equals 14. And then that we can subtract pH from both sides. So pOH is equal to 14 minus pH. And that's going to be 14 minus 7.26, which would give us a pOH of 6.74. All right, we'll talk about this in class. I hope it's making sense to you, and if not, we'll go over it together. See you in class.